What's up, everybody? I got a lot of questions regarding how I did the hair on my character here, so I thought I would do a tutorial on that. I see a lot of tutorials on how to use hair particles to kind of make these fuzzy balls, or I've seen a lot on hair simulation, but not many on how to make actual kind of character hair outside of a stylized form. So let's take a look at how I use the particle system to make this. Now, if you're interested in a deep dive into kind of all the hair particle systems, I actually have another tutorial on that. And this one, we're gonna be focusing specifically on how to make more of kind of a humanoid style hair for your character. If you wanna learn how I made this character, I actually have a Skillshare course on modeling this character and then a follow-up course on texturing this character. But for now, let's dive into how to make the hair. So first of all, one of the mistakes I see a lot of people making is applying hair to the wrong parts of the character or not giving their hair kind of shape underneath. So let me explain what I mean. So I'm gonna switch here into solid view here and then I'm gonna tab into edit mode. And over here, I'm gonna use my hair material to select all of these Icrospheres here that I have to represent the shape of the character's hair. So I'm gonna go ahead and hide there. And what I'll see a lot of people do is kind of select parts of their scalp here to apply hair to. And that is one way you can do it, especially if you're doing short hair. What you can do is you can switch into face select mode, you could grab some faces and apply that to a vertex group and apply your hair to that. But what happens is in order to get that kind of volume of hair, you end up having to render so many more hair particles that you end up slowing down your machine. And for a lot of people that aren't using a render farm, that's just not realistic. So it actually helps to kind of add some volume to your hair with some models so that you don't have to use as much hair to cover it. Now, if you're looking for realistic hair simulation, this may not be the method for you. You may want to actually comb that hair into shape. But for most people, they're looking just to kind of get a semi-realistic looking hair. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to unhide those icospheres. And what I'm going to do now is I have all these icospheres selected. So what you wanna do is select whatever portion you want your hair to appear on. And another tip here, if you're not doing animation and if you're not doing like a 3D turnaround, if you're just doing a photo, only select what's visible. So I can see here that these are really the only ones that are visible. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and kind of deselect all of these vertices in the background because I know that I'm not going to see those and my final render for now. And what that's gonna let me do is allow me to use less particles because even if you're on a high-end machine, I'm on a decent machine here and I have an RTX card and even I kind of struggle to view some of this stuff in the viewport when it gets to the final render and it took me quite a long time to render as well. So I'm only going to select the pieces here that are visible in the viewport. If you want yours to be visible in animation, of course you'll need to select everything. So what we're gonna to come to do is come down here to the object data properties, go to the vertex group, add a new vertex group, Group. we're gonna call this hair and then we're going to assign that make sure your weight here says one if you tag over into weight paint mode you'll be able to see where it is and you can of course soften that selection if you want using the blur tools and things like that but let's hop over to the particle settings so I'm gonna operate here from the front view here so I'm just gonna go ahead and drag this window over here and then I'm going to add a particle system to our character so let's come down here to the particle tab we're gonna click new particle and let's name this hair particle now there's two names here there's the name of the particle system slot on your character and then there's the name of the actual system so you can name both of these hair if you want to kind of keep that uniform and consistent so right now by default when you add a particle system it's emitter so the first thing we need to do is click hair and you'll see that it goes everywhere it gets kind of crazy nuts with the amount of hair you have there and also the length is crazy i don't know why but for some reason the hair length is set to four meters as your default length so um let's first go down here and add this to our group so first up let's just isolate this to our vertex group so you'll see this little vertex group tab down here and we're going to twirl that down and we have density length clump kink and all these other options now the ones you're most often going to use are density and length. So length will make it, you know, kind of longer based on kind of the softness of your weight paint. So that's one way you can use that, or you can just use the combing. We're going to use density for now. We're going to select hair and you'll see that it's isolating that to kind of our hair selection, but it is so long that it's a bit difficult to tell. So we're also gonna go ahead and tick on advanced here because that sometimes has some helpful options. I really feel like this should be on by default. First, what we're going to do is adjust the hair length here. So let's try something really small like 0.25. And we can see here, we're getting a much more realistic amount of hair. Now you'll notice here that we have our particle set to a thousand and even at a thousand, things are still 
looking pretty kind of barren. So what we need to do is use children. Now what children will do are actually give us hair particles that will be based around these parent particles, but they'll actually render quicker than if we just had a bajillion particles on there. So that's what we're going to be using to add a lot more hair. But let's look at some of these other options first. So if you noticed in the final render, I had some curly hair on the character. And one thing that always kind of trips people up is that they'll set the segments up here. So let's say we set our segments to something like six because we want curly hair. And what these segments do is they divide each one of these hairs. So that'll give us six segments that we can kind of spin around and make a curl. But then when you go to apply your curl, you'll notice that they won't look right in the viewport. And a lot of times that's because if you come down here to the viewport display, you'll see that the strand steps are limited. Now this is so that your viewport won't lag as much, but when you're trying to get a visual on your curls or other kind of humanoid character, it can be difficult to see what you're doing. So let's go ahead. We're gonna go ahead and bump this up to six and we'll leave the amount to normal. You can also turn that amount there to lower the amount of particles you see. But for the sake of this tutorial and visibility, I'm going to leave that up. But you can use those if you're having kind of a laggy viewport. So now we have the stands in our character here and we're ready to go ahead and apply some children particles to give us a lot more hair. So you have simple and interpolated, and they just kind of give you a few different options. I tend to find simple to be a bit more simple and easy to use, so we're gonna go ahead and use that. So here you'll see that we have the display amount, which is 10 children particles for every one parent particle, essentially giving us 10,000 particles, or at least that's how it's supposed to work. And if we go here, we can do a hundred here, and you can see that things start to get kind of crazy, but it's looking a little bit more natural. Again, this display amount is so that your viewport doesn't lag. If you're on a lower end machine, set those numbers to lower numbers. So next, what we're going to do is we're going to adjust the radius of our hair. So right now our hair looks kind of thick. If I switch in here to render mode, we'll get a better view of just how thick that hair is. And you can see that that's way thicker than hair normally is. So what you can do is come down here to the hair shape and change that. And you'll notice that the diameter root is set to one meter and the tip is set to zero meters. I like to set this down to something like 0.25 usually. And I tend to find that to be a lot more kind of realistic in terms of the look. So I'm gonna switch back to solid view here and let's start playing with the look of our hair, which is why most people are here. So first of all, we have a couple options here that we can do to give ourselves a bit more. So we have clumping and clumping would be that if I turn this up, which for now I'm going to set this down to 10. So we get a bit easier or maybe something in between like 25. And you'll see how the hair start to clump around each of the parent particles. So all the children kind of start to form these little kind of like pyramids around. And then you can add some twist to that to further kind of make that look a bit more natural. So if you're going for a character with kind of spiky hair, this would be the route to go. I'm gonna go with something more of curved hair. So I'm just gonna go ahead and reset that back to zero, but that's how you could kind of achieve that type of hair. Here we have clump noise. So what you could do is add noise to that clump, give it a bit more randomness, make it look a bit more real. Here's the roughness, which adjusts the roughness of the overall hair. And what we can do is mess with all these shapes here. We can mess with the endpoint, the shape, the random size. Usually I find that just the uniform and random are enough. So if I add 0.25, kind of the uniform. You see that small numbers go a long way, it gets pretty crazy. So I usually do pretty tiny numbers like 0 0.025 and that gives me a little bit of randomness and then same here 0 0.025 and that random. And what that'll do is make that noise kind of random all over. And I find just that tiny bit is usually enough. Of course, if you're going for a character with, you know, kind of wild, crazy hair, you could, you know, add a lot more there. So those are usually the settings I kind of play with there. Now, when you're doing humanoid characters, most of the stuff you're going to do is going to be right here. And then after that, you'll hop into comb mode, which we'll do in a second. Lastly, we have the kink type. So right now you can see that we kind of have just kind of like fuzzy little hair poking all out. But you know, most people that have volume to their hair like this aren't gonna be fuzzy, you know, like an animal. They're going to have like kinks, like curls, radials, waves, braids, and spiral. And each one of these does what they say. Now, personally, I found that curl tends to be most useful, more so than all these, maybe wave. Um, but I've found that curl tends to be the most useful 
for most types of hair that aren't straight. When we turn that on, you can see that we get kind of almost this grandma style haircut. And we're gonna start playing with these settings so that we can get this looking a bit more natural. Now, first of all, I wanna make this a bit easier to visualize. So I'm gonna turn down my display amount here to something like 10, maybe even less, let's do five. And that'll let us just kind of play with this in real time so we can see more. So here's the, here are the settings we have here. So clump will determine how much the clumping setting up here affects your curls. Flatness is the flatness of your hair and shape deals with kind of adjusting the offset from the beginning to the end. But the ones you're gonna use the most are the clumpness, which usually you'll just leave to one, maybe turn it down if the clump is ruining your look. But the most you're gonna focus on here are amplitude and frequency. So amplitude basically determines kind of the amplitude of the offset. In simpler terms, it kind of makes it kind of like the size of the curls in relation to your hair. And the frequency here would be how many curls you have. So you can see here that if I bring this down, you can see that the curls aren't quite so massive. And then if I bring this frequency up, you can see that we're getting more curls. And already you can see we're getting something much more natural with our character. So I'm gonna go ahead and bump that frequency up to maybe something like five, cause I want him to have like really tight little curls. And then what I'm going to do is leave this amplitude somewhere around here, maybe 0 0.05. And you'll see that those are actually pretty small. So let's see what happens when we turn our display mount back up. And this part of the process is just kind of playing with the settings until you get something you like. So I know that I don't want too many children particles because it's kind of creating too much hair and not looking overly natural. So what we can do is maybe play with the amplitude here. Again, let's go ahead and try 0.1, giving us a bit bigger curls. And I'm gonna turn down the frequency to something like three. And that's looking a lot more natural. A bit about our sponsor. Are you looking to level up your 3D skills? Then a great place to look is Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of incredible classes for creators. Explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. They have classes on Blender, character design, productivity, cinematography, illustration, business, and more. I'm a top teacher on the platform, and I host several Blender courses focused on characters in Blender. It's a great place to start learning Blender as I really focus on kind of the basics in these courses courses and trying to help level up. In my Your First 3D Animation class, I'll walk you through the process of animating your first 3D character. We'll cover the dope sheet, graph editor, and include free character rigs. This class focuses on the basics and it's made for beginners to Blender. It's curated specifically for learning and there are no ads. They're always launching new premium classes so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. The first 1,000 people to use this link will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. So next up, what we're gonna do is play with the comb. Also, I wanna point out that this is one hair particle system, and you may notice that small parts like this get exposed. We can fix that in the combing mode, but you can also go ahead and add another particle system with really tiny short hairs, and then blanket that across your entire model. And that's something that some people do where they kind of put their big hair in like certain sections where it's most important and then they kind of put small hairs around other areas. So that's another way to kind of get realistic hair. But for the sake of this tutorial, we're just gonna move on. So what we're going to do is grab our character here and then we're going to hold tab and then I'm going to move into particle edit mode. You should also be able to access that up here. And you'll notice here that it kind of reduces the hair particles so that we can kind of quickly comb these things. So when I go back into object mode, I know that I have way too much hair here kind of intercepting the ear, which is gonna be okay kind of from the front view. And then I know that I have a little bit too much on the forehead. So in particle edit mode, we have a couple different options. Most notably, we have the comb mode. So if I grab this comb mode, I can begin kind of combing hairs. And if I hold that F key, I can change the size of that brush there and can kind of comb some of these and maybe tame some of those hairs to match what I want more. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull these hairs off of the forehead here. And what you can do is kind of just go around and drag these to kind of mess with. Now the other one you may want to use is they have a smooth option here and that kind of lets you just kind of smooth out some of the random hairs and then they have one for length so if you wanted more hair to kind of grow longer you'll see here that the hairs are growing longer if I want the hairs on top here to be even longer and then we have the puff mode so our hair is already sticking out every direction but let's say that down here they're kind of looking a little too flat you can kind of start to puff them back out but the ones I use the most are the comb one, the add, and the cut. So what the cut does will allow us to remove particles. So let's go ahead, switch back to object mode here, 
and I can see that I still kind of have like a lot of hair up here. Let's come down over to the hair particle settings here and go to emission. And you'll see here that now that we have this edit, it won't let us kind of change our settings. So you kind of want to get all of your settings here before you go into your edit, because once you start combing things, you're kind of locking out your edit settings that you have there, aside from things like hair dynamics. So you can just disconnect that hair, delete the edit or whatever, and start over there. So what I'm gonna do here is go back into particle edit mode. So with the cut tool, what that does will actually kind of remove hair. So if I feel like I have too much hair around here at the bottom of the ears, I can cut those out with that cut tool. And you'll see now there's not so much hair around that ear. Now let's look at the add tool. So we did have kind of a bald spot here that seems to have been mostly fixed by just using combing. So if I go back into particle edit mode here, and comb, I can actually kind of comb some things over to maybe cover that spot. And you see that helped quite a bit, but what we can also do is tab back into particle edit mode and we know it's right there. So what we can do is click add here and this will actually let you add some particles. Now be careful, if you click and drag this, you will add a lot of particles at once. But if I hit back in the object mode here, we can see that that's covered up that bald spot. So with that, I kind of have a basic kind of particle edit here. So a big part of the realism with hair is the actual hair shader, which you can see here is not all that great. So one thing I'm gonna do is I feel like my hair is still a bit thick. So I'm gonna come down here to the hair shape. There are a couple settings you can edit after that. And this is one of them. And I'm actually gonna make this a little bit thinner, do 0.15. And then because I made my hair thinner, I should probably kind of maybe bump up the actual amount of hair. So I'm gonna come here to my children and I'm going to do 100. And that kind of gives me a bit more hair to work with. I'm gonna set that on the render amount though so that I don't slow down my viewport. I'm gonna leave this at 50 so that I can kind of show you what I'm doing real time. Then what I'm going to do here is I have a hair here and that hair is for that volume that I introduced before. But what I wanna do is create an actual hair shader. So I'm gonna click new and I'm going to click new material. And then I'm going to call this hair particle. Then what we're gonna do is go back here to our particle settings and under render here, we have the option of choosing how to render. And for the material, right now you can see it's using the shirt material, which is why it's got kind of such a dull, boring color. And what we're gonna do is click that and find our hair particle and that's to switch it over to that kind of white particle system that we have. We're gonna come over here to our shader editor. And we're just gonna go ahead and get rid of this default BSDF gonna hit search, search for hair. Now there's a couple different ones and you want the principled hair BSDF. That's the newest one, kind of the best looking one. And then here you can see that our hair is already looking a lot more realistic. Now I have the render amount turned down so you can see some of the kind of the uh, icospheres I have underneath there. Won't need to worry about that for now. We can change the roughness of our hair here, making it glossiness or not. You can add a coat to it to kind of give it a gelled look, play with the index of refraction. Most of these you're going to ignore. You play with the roughness and the color. There are different other options here if you want to do melaton concentration. I prefer to use direct coloring. So with my character, I gave him kind of like an orangish hair, kind of just a little red head. And that's how I achieved that kind of hair effect. So I hope you found this tutorial helpful. As I said, these do take a long time to render. So hopefully you're able to find some settings that work on your machine. If you'd like to learn how I texture this character and model this character, please check out my course. And as usual, I love seeing what you create. So please tag me in your creations at Southern Shoddy on Instagram.